Uh, it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Joan Takiyamogawa. Uh, for those of you who don't know Joan, she's been involved in ceramics, or her family's been involved in ceramics since the 15th century. Um, Joan pays tribute to her Japanese and family heritage by utilizing their ancient ceramic forms as guides. She contemporizes them by applying imagery from her American life. Uh, Joan studied ceramics under Ralph Becerra at Otis, um, where she currently teaches. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from UCLA in Geography and East Asian Studies, and a Master of Arts from the Stanford Graduate School of Education. Joan's work is part of many public collections, including the Renwick Gallery Smithsonian, uh, LA uh, LACMA, since we're local we can say LACMA, uh, and the American Museum of Ceramic Art. Joan also serves on AMOCA's board. Uh, please welcome me, in, well, please join me in welcoming Joan Takiyamoga. I was told not to walk around too much, but maybe I won't. So, good evening and thank you very much for braving the traffic and coming out here to AMOCA. Wow, it's so nice to see so many of you here today. Thank you very much. Um, a lot of you are wondering what in the world I'm up to. Uh, why did I go completely white? I like to look at this show as 50 shades of white. Um, but primarily, it is, it's a study that I have been doing since 1973. This journey began at UCLA when I was a geography major, ecosystems major, East Asian studies major, but looking at uh, the environment, and we were a very, very small program in the geography department. I think three of us graduated my year, so we were very, very small um, and very rigorous. It was a very, very rigorous program of a lot of math, a lot of science, all a lot of languages, uh, a, a three-year language requirement, which wasn't hard because I went to school in Japan during part of it, but uh, I also think that it was probably one of the best educations a person can can have. And my first semester I decided to take a class called Dating Techniques because I was socially a little awkward and it wasn't the course I thought it was going to be. I studied dental chronology, potassium argon, obsidian <laughs> hydration, and carbon-14. And that solidified a lot of the weak math skills. I had to apply math skills. I was always working with bones or metal or pots. I was dating, I, I participated in dating LA woman instead, um, and, and that gave this, uh, this, this informed knowledge of global warming in 1973, of uh, temperature inversion layers that were significant, a thinning uh, ozone layer, and so that has been there all the time. It's why I work in clay, it's how I work in clay, I'm very careful with the materials, we all work with uh, the earth, and I think that all of us who do touch clay understand that respect for the earth. Uh, so it, st it started off with me um, when I was a child. My father asked me to create a totem. Uh, he was he was a uh, during World War II. He was a Japanese American translator for the uh, military intelligence and he partnered with a Navajo translator. I think there was even a movie about them. Um, and, his, and he had a, a group of friends that were his brothers forever. So we went on to the reservation. I heard about adopting totems as a Native American experience. I considered these all totems. I do not, did not have a totem for a long, long time. My dad had a totem, it was a bear. We had bears all over the house. Um, but mine, I think, Maybe I can declare it more the coral because coral is a way of uh, looking at how we're doing environmentally. Coral filters the uh, the Earth's oceans. Coral uh, is the canary in the uh, in the gold in the, in the mine, so that we can know how we're doing, and we are seeing the bleaching of coral throughout the world. So each one of the pieces that you see in my show is after a coral reef that is uh, in. Uh, distressed. They are not dead, but they are uh, under distress. So this is the coral reef in 1991 that I built. Um, uh, it's mounted on the dining room table. I knocked off the legs, bolted the table to the wall, and I created a plate tectonics uh, Japanese-American dinnerware set. And there uh, you have the Hawaiian waters of turquoise waters. Uh, 
uh, raised on gold uh, relief that you could put your, uh, your chicken or most likely your fish. And in the center, I'm already showing indications of decay of the coral reefs in 1991, but I would serve sushi on it. So it is, it, and you can take a look at it in our dining room. Uh, uh, we knew that my grandmother's dining, uh, Stephen's grandmother's uh, dining room set was arriving, and so it, it made it, it gave us an opportunity. But it was also the idea of not bringing in furniture uh, to the house unless it was um, solid, it was well made, and it was second hand, so that we would uh, reduce our carbon footprint. So uh, we have never bought a piece of furniture at, in our home. Uh, to, the teapot sort of took over the world in the 1990s. Um, thank you, Sunny Cam, and all of you, um, <laughs> and Gloria. Um, but I also was starting to do, uh, again, this idealized version of coral reefs and also coral teapots. And in, in 2006, Stephen and I uh, decided to stop watering our front lawn. Uh, we we uh, decided to go with DG, decomposed granite, raised beds. Uh, control the amount of water we were using, uh, trying to recycle as much as possible. Uh, most of the plants here came, uh, in the yard came from Porn Tips and John's house or uh, Ralph Becerra's house, as I recall. Again, back to that thrift of, uh, of living a little more simply, uh, keeping our water uh, down. The city of Pasadena in 2006 cited us for taking out our lawn. Uh, today, in 2006 and 17, they pay us five, $500 for taking out our lawns, but we were cited for uh, removing our lawn and creating a brownscape. Now lawn shaming is uh, fashionable. <laughs> I did take my paperwork to the city of Pasadena. I was a design commissioner at the time, and I said, you're really going to regret this. You really need to take this away from me, which they did. And um, so we were not, uh, we did not have to pay the fine. Um, this one's called title in year, uh, because I forgot to put it in here. This is my card. <laughs> This is my garden, uh, a raised beds, a uh, vegetable garden. This is about 10 years ago, and I can't grow this now. I, it is way too hot in the Pasadena, too many uh, days over 100 degrees. It is not possible, even 10 years later, to grow uh, with the, the sun's rays so intense. There's my head in the center there, I don't know if you can tell. Um, but I can no longer use this side of the yard uh, and will probably have to, and I am going to build an above ground receptacle for water, which I'll show you. Sustained Beauty 2007 was shortly after I was, uh, I, we, we stopped watering the yard, um, and uh, this belongs to Amoca. And it was a, a, an idea that I had about writing poetry on the surface of the pieces. So here we're talking about if we follow nature's rules, um, you know, we will we will be profitable actually. And so I think there is something to be said that one way we will change the world, I believe, is that if we can if it's, we find that it's profitable. <laughs> uh, strange beauty is also about the life of an artist uh, living in this uh, and making trying to make ends meet. Although I have that tendency to go very gold with platinum with pearls, with amethyst, opulent, colorful, um, and celebrating color. And I like to think of it as a voice from the Pacific Rim, where I wrote all over it. Sometimes uh, it's necessary to do some uh, social uh, commentary. I don't do it too often, but again, uh, racial profiling was starting to rear its ugly head. Today, I think we're seeing the same. So I uh, in. Along the edges are the last names of all of the members of my family who were relocated during World War II, over 300 family members. All of them were American citizens. And on the sides I wrote the court cases um, about relocation, uh, the Korematsu versus the uh, Supreme Court. I mean, the United States of America went all the way to the Supreme Court. Fred Korematsu was exonerated, but relocation camps were not, and so therefore a dangerous precedent has been established legally that relocation camps can return again, and I am very concerned and quite active about the potential of our current climate, of course. Uh, this is called Japanese American Cultural Baggage. It's also about relocation camps, and I, this came out right after 9-11. Um, 
I was, I was very, very worried about uh, how Muslim Americans would be treated. Each one of these are little symbols of relocation, Japan and America. Um, fi many of the Japanese Americans were fishing. They were um, also Medal of Honor recipients. Uh, um, and in fact, the highest number of Medal of Armor, uh, a Medal of Honor recipients came from the le legendary 442. Um, I have ducks that are quietly swimming there because during World War II, uh, Japanese Americans wore pins that they used, carved out of wood or whatever materials they could, and they, they wore them down to the dining hall, and it represented freedom and flight, and so it was a quiet social protest. So my ducks are now swimming smoothly in calmer and quieter waters. Sometimes I really shock myself. Um, I always tell my students that always shoot your work vertically and horizontally because most likely the vertical shot will end up on a hotel throwaway magazine. Um, and I, for many, many years, showed at SOFA Chicago, SOFA, SOFA New York. It was really an exciting period of time in my career, I think, in American ceramics and in, in those of us who work with our hands. And then we had the housing bubble, and here I am talking about the housing bubble, very dangerous uh, loans. I tried to uh, pay off the mortgage of the house, and nobody at Country Ride knew how to uh, take my money. They didn't know how to allow me to burn the mortgage. I kept getting circling around to refinance. No, I'm not refinancing, I'm re burning the mortgage. And, and of course, we know where Countrywide is today. Um, and, I, and, and this is a called uh, miso deflated. This is what happened to our property. Um, I, I screened on a, a million dollar bill, and in the center is my head. Um, so <laughs> and this is a miso shiru bowl uh, dumping out subprime lending practices and houses that are sinking in 2008. And I was talking about this in 2008, 2007, 2006 always way too far ahead of uh, where I should be. So there's my head, there you can see, one million dollar bill right there. <laughs> California's role, this is called California's role, and this is California's role in the economic as well as the, uh, the environmental uh, issues that we have. Um, uh, Bill McDonough was saying not too long ago that, and he wrote, co-author of Cradle to Cradle, who talked he talks about uh, there are three things that he three identifiable areas that he is going to spend the rest of his life working on environmental issues and sustainable practices, and that's the state of California, Walmart, and China. And so I thought that's the idea, California role. Um, so each piece of sushi has oil derricks, banks that are sinking. Um, this this was the land that we're sitting on right now is a bank that has. Uh, that sunk. Um, we have the TARP program there uh, with the egg sushi because uh, you know we had we had that TARP program which I'm really never understanding too well, um, and of course the Gold Coast of California all on a sushi platter. And I guess a lot of people this is what you, you would probably think with with what I have a tendency to do, um, but I also want to point out that I was talking about. Uh, uh, alligators and uh, the endangered species of alligators and ladies handbags uh, on your right on your right is a, a, a harken to an old Kokutani piece I saw over at LA County Art Museum in the Japanese pavilion of course I golded it out and glitzed it out and uh, uh, again over on your right is references to Hawaii and some of the beauty there and, and lastly, I, I think that you see a, a large departure. This is uh, one of my former students, and he is a very successful uh, motion graphics expert, Billy Kwok. He came, in the middle of summer, we came out and took this photograph. All of these lights that are hanging in my backyard are LED. They will soon be solar pow uh, powered. The wood of this structure is recycled wood. It is very hard being us. Um, uh, it, you know, we had to cure the wood, wait a few, you know, wait a long time, hoist it up, get people to hoist it up. Um, put sun, I did put uh, sun, sunscreening over there, but eventually when solar panels are more sophisticated, I will be able to put solar panel roof. That's my intention. It's built 
big enough and heavy enough to sustain it, but they're just too ugly and too impractical at this point. The center little island where there's a 60-year-old ginkgo planted and an old lantern I found in uh, uh, I found at a garage sale, or a very nice estate sale actually, that whole oval in the center is our drainage system. So the entire backyard drains into that oval there. It goes, to, it goes towards the street and it dumps out in the street, but it will be diverted into above ground uh, receptacle, which I saw over in Big Island, Hawaii. They're doing it. Why can't I? Um, but uh, I, I think the theme of, of, of a lot of what I'm talking about is that we all can make adjustments to what, how we live, to live a little simpler, to live with a little less, um, I think to, uh, to reduce our carbon footprint, to re recycle, it's a lot of work. Um, actually recycling, in my opinion, is a failure. When we go to the trash every... Uh, every day, every week, it is a failure on Stephen Jones' part that we are throwing things away. Even recycling to me, because I'm really off the deep end, is a form of um, a failure because we ha I haven't bought a package, because it's usually a package, that I could use again. So consequently, uh, grocery shopping is a, is a challenge for both Steve and I. Um, we, we do buy that terrible gelato that has the twist-on container. It's plastic, it's, uh, it twists on so that we can reuse the packaging and not uh, dispose of it. So there's a lot of little things that uh, we, we do. My husband is a, a retired organic produce broker, so it's been with us since, in his case, 1972. He started this journey in organic produce as a, um, as a religion and it became a big business. When it became a big business and he was selling off and buying entire farms of organic produce, and then when Costco said, we are going to encourage growers and uh, sponsor growers, we knew it was time for him to retire, that the little guy was no longer uh, there. He did very well. It was time to, um, to, to let Costco take over the world. So, um, and with that, I, I am end ending with this slide because you'll see a real departure. It's so good to see so many of you here today. Um, all of the lighting up there. Thank you, Brock, for uh, Barrett, for all of your help on the lighting. Uh, please take a look at the chandelier because Brock uh, came up with the idea of using airplane cable to suspend the, uh, uh, suspend the chandelier. Thank you, Dave, for going upstairs and screwing it through, going through concrete of the vault and bolting it to a beam. They, uh, thank you, Beth Ann, Andrea, for uh, tolerating all those uh, LED puck lights from, that uh, are remote controlled uh, sometimes, <laughs> and to adapting uh, to this uh, to this philosophy and way of life. And like I said, um, it isn't easy uh, to be an organ to be organic at my house. Um, we introduced uh, just to end with this. It's not easy. We know a lot of good growers, and we know a lot of smart people. As a result, they're probably the smartest people I've ever met are the organic growers. So I thought I would be like them. Built an owl house, put it on top of the house. The owls came. I figured if you build it, they will come. The owls then parked themselves, lived on top of our house, but flew over our house and ate everybody else's rodents, gophers, and, and mice. <laughs> squirrels, everything. Not ours though. <laughs> then I released chicken. Then we released chickens to eat the bugs and then suddenly the chickens were disappearing. <laughs> Maybe it was the owls, I'm not sure. And then my neighbor who's the bee man of Pasadena released bees into our yard to pollinate because we were having a collapsing uh, bee and then the bees went into the owl house. So um, it is difficult to be us. <laughs> and we have the, and it was a, it was a produce freight. It's down. It was not as successful uh, as as uh, organic growers. And organic growers are some of the most intelligent, creative, most interesting people I've ever met. I also think ceramic artists. We we are, we have a kinship with this kind of thinking. Thank you very much for coming today.